So when I just say believe, you, he preaching easy believism. Man, they just say believe. Well, that's all John said. Ninety-nine times, that's all he ever said. Believe, 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 believe. But the fellow who knows what repentance is knows it's included in believing. If I said leave Atlanta and go to California, that's okay. But if I said go to California, leaving Atlanta is included. And don't fuss at me just because I don't say leave Atlanta every time I say go to California. I just assumed you had enough sense to know what I meant by that. Sure. When I was an 11-year-old boy, I had to change my mind. I didn't change my way of living. I didn't suddenly become perfect. I didn't turn from all my sin because I've sinned, sinned, sinned. But I did change my mind. You've got to change your mind. You've got to change your mind about several things. You have to change your mind about wanting to be saved. Yeah, I've changed my mind. I do want to be saved. That's change your mind. You said, I've been good enough to go to heaven. I've lived good as some of the deacons out of the church. You've got to change your mind about that according to Luke 13. Because you're as big a sinner as the fellow whom the Tower of Shalom fell on, and you're as big a sinner as the guy whose blood... Pilate, mingle with the sacrifices, and you'll change your mind about it and go to hell. Come on. And you'll change your mind about religion and salvation. You'll even change your mind about repentance if you get saved. You're going to have to repent about your idea about repentance to get saved. Because if you have felt repentance as reformation or turning from sin and you're going to turn from sin to get saved, then you're not going to get saved till you change your mind about that idea and decide that you are saved by the substitutionary death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Amen. And then, you'll, then you've repented over your repentance. And we've got a whole pass of people who need to repent over their repentance in order to get saved because their repentance is going to send them to hell. Because if they think they want to merit heaven because they turned in the road one day and quit sinning and they reformed, boy, you dirty buzzard, you, the Bible said all your righteousnesses are like filthy rags in God's sight. Well, it's not that difficult to understand, is it? But you know why I don't use the word much? Because when you say it, the average person's idea means that I won't ever sin again. And I'm going to tell you something. I would not get on my knees right now beside this platform and say, Dear God, I'll never sin again. I'd quake like an earthquake to say it because I know I'd do it again before the sun went down tomorrow. I just want you to know these things so if you hear anything out in the bushes, you can just sort of grin and say, I know what it teaches. And if anybody ever comes in here, and they have, Good preacher came right up here, and I was sitting there, and John went a little and John looked at me. He was letting her go, these preachers who preach, believe, 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 believe. And don't ever preach repentance. That's me, sitting over there. <laughs> so I'm going to say repentance occasionally, but when I say it, I can't say it till you know what it means. Because if I say it and you think it means reformation, then I'm misleading you. I've got to teach you what it means. Follow me? So when John said believe, repentance was included in the believing. If by repentance you mean turning from sin, I don't preach it. If by repentance you mean reformation, I don't preach it. If by repentance you mean a change of mind, a reconsideration, I preach it. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, 9, and 10. I'll close with this one. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Now put verse 10 where verse 10 is. Not, don't put it in verse 7. 
Put it in verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus under good works. Does that go before 8 and 9, or does it come after 8 and 9? It always comes after 8 and 9. Put it where it belongs. Now, I come along and I preach repentance as a reformation of turning from sin, and you're honest people. And if you've got confidence in what I'm telling you, you start thinking about what you did yesterday and what you did last week. And I keep just barreling right down on you. If you didn't turn from your sin, you're not saved. If you cussed after you got saved, bless God, you're not saved. And I keep barreling right straight down on you. You know what happens to you? You begin to doubt your salvation. And a fellow who believes that you have to turn from all your sins to get saved, nine out of ten of them cannot tell you, I know I'm saved. Because he's not really sure that he's made that complete turn yet. And the fellow who teaches that will very seldom teach assurance of salvation to a congregation because he can't lead a congregation to assurance. He has no basis. Because you never know whether you made the turn yet or not. Because you may yet sin again down the road. But a fellow who teaches salvation by grace through faith on the finished work of Jesus and the basis of assurance, his written word, that guy knows he's saved and his people and followers know they're saved based on what God said and they don't go through life wearing and biting their fingers. And that crowd doesn't live any wickeder and more sinful than the crowd who really pushes for reformation. Out of love for Christ and out of fear of chastening, that crowd lives purer and better than the other crowd. 1 John 3, 2. Now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, or we shall see him as he is. And every man that has this hope, this hope in himself, purifies himself even as he is pure. The man who believes Jesus is going to come again purifies himself, cleans his life up so he won't be ashamed when Jesus comes. When Jesus comes, he's going to find some believers in sin. I have no way of proving it, but he's going to, I would say he'll find some of you believers in sin when he comes. If Jesus had come when David was committing adultery with Bathsheba, would David have gone to heaven? Yes. Well, that startles you. You know why that shocks you? Because that goes contrary to what your nature feels and thinks and believes. Suppose Jesus had come when uh, David had just sent Uriah out into battle and had him killed out in battle. Would David have gone to heaven? If he hadn't, he had lost his salvation, wouldn't he? Come on, talk to me. You do believe in eternal security, don't you? I haven't talked you out of that tonight, have I? If you believe in salvation by turning from sin, I don't see how you can believe in eternal security because you don't know whether you're going to make it or not. You may yet go back in sin before Jesus comes. But if you believe in salvation by grace based on the finished work of Jesus on the cross, you can preach assurance of salvation and you can preach eternal security and you don't upset believers. But people get the idea, yeah, but my mama believed and my daddy believed and that old preacher was such a good guy and that's the way he always preached it. Well, you've been wrong so long, you can get right tonight. <laughs> so what? My uncle's always believing that in G. White. But he's wrong. He's a strict Seventh-day Adventist, but he's wrong. Paul, what are you going to tell that jailer who wants to be saved? I mean, he's right there at midnight. He said, Lord, what must I do? What's the one imperative? What is the one thing i got to do? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And I said, Paul, preach repentance to him. You're making it too easy for him. But when you hear him criticize him, say, our pastor believes in repentance. He preaches repentance! But he don't say turn or burn. He says repent or perish. 
Repent about your attitude towards sin that you're as bad a sinner as anybody else in the world. Repent about your attitude toward God. That he's not a graven image made out of stone and silver and gold. But he's a living God, resurrected from the dead. Who judges the world? Change your mind about that. Amen.